Okay. Oh boy. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? I don't think I am. Hello. Um, okay. Everybody. Okay. You're liking the quilt hymns. I'm glad. I really, the quilt church lives always. It will always live on. Uh, certainly in the theme song for the show, uh, theme songs. Um, but the reason I wanted to, <laughs> the reason I thought I was taking it out tonight was because now there's a copyright strike and there's a copyright claim and both sound really terrifying, but, uh, on YouTube copyright claims are, they happen all the time. Um, Copyright strikes are not good. I've never had one of those, and I don't know what you would have to do to get one of those. Don't I need to read all the stuff, obviously. But um, I used uh, music from a public, I mean, a um, copyright-free website. I mean, I paid, like, a subscription fee to have access to this music. So either you have to, like, pay for... I mean, I... It's a, it's it's like a, a website, if it, Epidemic Sound or something like that, and I mean that's the point. They have music for you that you can use on your content in your content uh, that's copyright free. So I paid for that and then I play it. But I think that's the problem. That is the problem. So I got to do something about it, and I don't know what to do. I mean I know what to do. Find different music, but I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. So, but it's a pretty easy thing to fix because I can go into my YouTube videos and just like clip out the starting soon screen from the videos, which makes sense anyway. And with the be right back screen, which I think is probably are also affected because of, I got the, the copyright free music from the same website. Um, I think that it, 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 it will, I could just take that out too. So it's no problem. Hey, everybody. Okay. Hey, whoa, Fiendor. That's like a very cool emote. Speaking of music. Well, I guess that's why you put it there. Oh, man. Okay, everybody. Let's see what's going on. I, oh, my complexion. Why don't I just point out the problem? Hmm? Um, I got a, ah, whew, I'm glad I'm here. I whew, steamed. I got real steamed today. Did you ever get one of those emails that just, you know, just like, makes you angry you know yeah one of those and you shouldn't respond uh and normally from this place that sends these emails that are just rage making i do not respond it's the letting agent for our former apartment the the nightmare continues because we need our deposit back but they are if, uh, there's this like run around and the owner is blah, 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 blah. and I I just I just I just am keep it professional I just always do but today they said the owner would like to request who has not seen the unit by the way the owner would like to request uh, a cleaning service be called in before she arrives home <laughs> this shitty apartment like oh my god and she hasn't even seen it and there's pictures that were taken of the place that I cleaned completely myself with a mop and a thing, you know, um, and it was 199 pounds I needed to approve to be taken out of the deposit. And I was like, <clears throat> no, no. And I just kind of told her all the, th I was like, this is very frustrating, you know, because blah, 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 blah. so I sent one of those emails. I sent, I sent, I mean, it wasn't, I didn't use profanity or anything like that, but I mean, I, 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 I was like, this is not personal to you, but let me tell you what that was actually like. And like, you know, you did not, we didn't know this. We didn't know it was council housing essentially. Um, and we didn't know about the construction project that, you know, so anyway, I finally said it. I said it. No exclamation points, no all caps. But it just like, it <clears throat> came at like 4.10 and I was like, ah! And so then I had to rush around and, and get ready to change my vibe, man. Oh, I did forget my water. Hmm, I'm gonna have to get that. Um, and I don't think Eric can help me. So anyway, okay. Let's, so I'm, I'm glad I'm here. And oh, the show, the show, the show tonight, tonight's show. 
it's going to be very, very good. It's very, very good. Um, okay. Let's, let's be in the moment. Let's be here now. I see you. Okay. Jill is at work, but she is asked politely if someone can come and steal her. She is, she is asked, it's on the record, that she would like someone to come in and steal her so she can nerd out instead of work. So there you go. There you go. Nas de Quilts is here. DeMarie is here. So in love. So in love. That sounds like a, an 80s like rap star, you know? Like the really good ones, you know? Like Tone Loke or um, Quest Love. Well, he's not from the 80s, but you know? So in love. I love it. Y y whoever you are, whoever you are, whatever you do in life, I'm glad you're here. And you might be new. I feel like I would remember So in Love. It's such a good, it's a really good name. Okay. Um, I've done that literally all day. Literally all day. Literally. <sighs> Quilting Nancy. Carol Hempel. Homesmaker. Yeah. This is core. This is core, core nerd. Thank you for being here. I love it that you come to this show. I also worry I have lipstick on my teeth. Well, um, Eric. Okay. Um, you okay? You're hearing music. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, who said, yes, who's at Holmes? You said if you're still on the magic dust from the Patchwork Girl movie. Oh, was that wild? Um, maybe you are. I mean, I don't know. Amy, Amy, the timing has worked out and you can catch at least part of the live. I know how good that feels when I catch a live from somebody that I watch over on the YouTubes. Um, I'm so happy. I'm like, oh yes. Cause I watch the playbacks always, but it's so much fun when you catch a live, you know, even part of it. So I'm glad you're here for however much you can, um, hang out for. It's a strangely organized grammatical style styling that I did just now word and bird nerd nerd I mean in your heart you are in your heart you're a nerd you must get a tv for the sewing guest room just for this <gasps> approved approved yeah. and then steal Jill and then just sit her down in front of that tv two two things solved Fiendor, very cool. I love that emoji. Um, Amy loves the quilt hymns. Same. I talked to you about all that. Susan Michaels here. Um, yep, yep, yep. I was thinking of something totally random. Vicky4800, welcome back. Sue, welcome back. So glad you're here. Carol Quilts, yes. Hey, we have a first time chat. Oh, you don't know? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Clear suitcase. First of all, I had a clear purse at one point. It was like all the rage. Um, I hated it. I didn't want people seeing my stuff. I mean, yeah, I got rid of it. But I think it works for you. Um, no, it's not, well, it's kind of a cult, kind of. Um, I will give you a preview. I will just let you know that, hand to God, the quilt on your screen is called Bucket of Blood. It really is. <laughs> You're going to see why, but that's literally what it's called. It's called Bucket of Blood. I figured for Halloween, October, whatever, it would be appropriate. So you should stick around and hear, hear what it is. Uh, thanks for coming. Michael Van, uh, Michelle Van Scrappy, welcome. Welcome back. Um, quilting is the same theme, exactly. Val, hello, hello. Um, <laughs> what's quilting? You are about to find out, my friend. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We may have a future quilt person in here, so we gotta... <laughs> hey, listen, listen, you're welcome to stay. This is a very cool group of people. Just be nice and you can hang out all day. You can lurk, that's fine. You can, whatever you wanna do, except, you know, keep it to quilts, basically. Um, okay, I don't know, didn't like it, checked, check, try to charge. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, but I am going to, exactly. Quilting Politic has said it, clear suitcase. You've got friends already, just hang out and you'll see. Um, okay, back from the retreat. Viv, how, how was it? How was your retreat? Was it everything that you wanted it to be? You don't have to actually say, because if you, and you don't wanna share that, 
that that's okay. So really, I'm going to retract my question. I do not want you to answer. Unless you want to. But you, I just don't want I don't want to know. Nobody wants to know. Um, so in love, you're not new. Why did I, why did I think that? Um, okay. Cool. Eric? Oh, yes. Um, honey, would you bring me a glass of water? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Lucky break. Okay, so yes, I need to use new product in my hair. It's not really doing what I wanted it to do. It's fine. So, th so here's what we do on the show. There's new people, um, and uh, clear suitcase. I don't even know if you're gonna stick around, but I do know that there are other new people. There are people who've just dropped in uh, randomly. There are people who might have seen. You know, they made their friend of somebody who's been here before who loves the show. It's called Quilt Nerd, formerly Quilt Church, but it's Quilt Nerd now. Um, we uh, uh, or maybe you saw a social media post about this show and you're like, what is this? And why is it on Twitch? And what is Twitch? Twitch is um, a live streaming platform. This is kind of the intro it's to kind of get me to mm, and explain what this is. So Twitch is uh, primarily um, uh, a place where uh, the live streams ha happen and most of the live streams are um, video game video games that people put people play their video games and they're super into them and they're super good at playing them in many cases not all cases um, and people like to watch other people play video games and twitch has this interactivity that allows them to sort of be part of the game it's sort of like there um, hmm. Um, it allows people to be part of the game, to sort of get involved in the live stream, and it's been around for a while. The gamers love it, the kids these days, many adults. <laughs> and um, But over time, I started to see, and this is relatively recently, I didn't have a Twitch account before I started the show, okay? So if you're new here to Twitch, it's all good. It's all good, man. Um, uh, so 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 I was like, oh, Twitch is actually for other things. People Twitch stream on Twitch things that aren't have nothing to do with gaming. Um, there are there are many like knitters and artists who stream on Twitch. They they live stream what they do. And I found someone who did research on her computer. You know, shared her screen and sort of narrated or gave commentary to what she was researching as she was researching it in, in, in real time on Twitch. And she was engaging with the people who were hanging out with her. And sometimes, you know, she wouldn't talk much and then she'd pull up a video or something she was gonna watch and people would watch it with her. And this was strangely mesmerizing. And I thought, oh, I really, I really do a lot of research. And my specialty is quilts and um, quilt history, okay? And so I really like to learn about things like a quilt that's called Bucket of Blood. Yeah, like the quilt that you're looking at, it's called Bucket of Blood. It's an American Red Cross quilt, okay, from the 19th century. We're gonna talk about 19, yeah. I've got the information queued up to tell you, but um, that's weird and <laughs> I wanna know more. And quilts are such ridiculously interesting objects because they track history, um, not just women's history, but definitely women's history. Um, they are political objects. Sometimes they reflect political ideas of the time. Sometimes they're even campaign quilts that people make for uh, a particular candidate they're supporting or a cause they're supporting. I'm not gonna say the word term whatever out loud at all but you know that that weird speaking of cults you know that weird group of people that uses an a letter from the alphabet in their stuff do you know that i've seen several quilts made by people who you know use that letter of the alphabet yeah uh two of them actually have been floating around i mean a couple pictures people sent me you know i'm not going to show them it's just super gross but i mean yeah like quilts touch every bit of culture and every bit of culture ends up in our quilts right and and i make quilts and i love that but uh and i used to teach on television that's right on real television uh, on public television um and oof, i shouldn't say that because then people might like google it 
I was young. I needed the money. Um, anyway, so yeah, I just really like learning about the history of it all because it, it's just fascinating. It's like philosophy and art and economics. And um, if you don't believe me, you should just watch this show because you will find out very quickly that um, what I say is true. So um, yeah, if quilts were just pretty, if they were just blankets, don't say blankets, don't ever say blankets to a quilter. <laughs> If they were just pretty blankets, I would definitely not be this like into them. But there's so much more than that. And I get to learn about all the things by just looking at a quilt. And we don't look at just one quilt, trust me. We look at many of them. And all the things that I bring to you, and now this is kind of the, now I'm winding up the, hey Molly, hey Stephanie Cake. I know, bucket of blood, right? Um, Christmas is here. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stephanie cake. We got nerds. We got cakes. I'm into it. Little birds. Um, the stuff that I bring to the show is, you know, things that I pull out of my, my files on the cloud. I have other files at home, but I'm in London right now. So in Chicago, I have like files. <laughs> and a lot of times when I'm looking at things, I'm looking for a specific thing for a lecture or whatever. So I'm looking at quilts and reading about things. And I find all this stuff that I can't I don't have time to look at at that moment because I'm writing an article for a magazine or I'm doing this or that. And so I'll stick a link or a something into my file and half the time or more than half the time, I never get back to it because I, I forget. I, I forget. I basically forget that I even found it at all. Um, or later I'll be like, oh, I saw a thing once and, and find it. But um, but that's lame. I don't want to. I don't want to come across this most amazing stuff and not tell, not remember it, and not have time, not not set aside time to look at it, and not and then not share it, like ever, unless it ends up in a lecture or an article or something like that. So, this show is full of stuff that I don't know everything about. I don't know everything about anything, but I bring things to the table that I discover along with you. I have a pretty good sense of what would be cool to look at. I was an editor for many years. Um, and someone, someone, our friend Mark called this a video magazine. So that's kind of cool. So that is what we do. And that is how it goes. And you are welcome to lurk here. You do not have to be in the chat, but the chat is great. Um, dare I say we have a community. We do. We have a congregation, quilt church. It's where we come to just like commune with the church. So it's, I mean, I'm glad we didn't call it the quilt cult. We wouldn't have called it that. Clear suitcase, might. Is he still here? I don't know. I, I could be, it's not necessarily a, a man or a boy. <clears throat> so I have chips. That's the official mascot snack of Quilt Nerd. And I think, <laughs> I hope, I hope. Hey, Fossil Hannah. Hey, right on. Fossil Hannah, welcome. Everyone, welcome Fossil Hannah to the chat. I probably didn't need to tell them that. Um, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, sorry, I keep checking my appearance. I try not to do that, but it's just that kind of day. Uh, I'm so glad you're here and they caught alive. It is really fun to be here live. Um, hopefully you can make it happen. Make it happen. You love watching my research process here. Thank you, Stephanie Cake. It validates your rabbit hole method. Listen, your own rabbit hole method. Tonight's show, which is now beginning, <laughs> it's truly beginning. Um, no, no, the intro is so important. The intro and the welcomes and all that, it's so important. It's, it's important because this is an odd thing for quilters. This is a new format for most people that I know, frankly. So important to set this up right. Um, and it reminds us all why we're here, right? Um, tonight's show is a perfect example of the rabbit hole. I will tell you exactly what I mean as we get there. So what is this quilt? What is this quilt? <clears throat> I'm going to turn this off. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. Um, okay. So I found this quilt on the Los Angeles County of Art, the Los Angeles County of Modern Art. Is that right? Yeah, no, museum. Okay, I didn't think so. Los Angeles County Museum of Art um, in, you know, Los Angeles. And uh, LACMA, L-A-C-M-A is what they go by. And I've, I've mentioned LACMA um, 
many times, partly because I will always feel grateful to them um, at some point years ago. And at, at this point, I, I mean, I think they were like, they were certainly the first institution, major institution that had a quilt collection to put the quilts on Wikipedia Commons, like images of their quilt collection were in Wikipedia Commons to be used, you know, they were in the public domain. Wiki Commons is a public domain website, search engine encyclopedia, you know? And when I was really, when I was really green, wet behind the ears, just a fledgling lecturer, um, you know, I really, I didn't really know where to find a lot of quilt images and stuff. So I would go to Wiki Commons and there were really great images of quilts there. And they were from the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. So like, dude, thanks. Cause that was really helpful. And I don't know that any other major museum has done such a specific like dump into, <laughs> into Wiki Commons. Um, of course the Met has released a lot of them so many images into the public domain um, and other museums have done that as well. But LACMA was the first that I really knew of. So I will always be grateful to LACMA. Um, yeah, cool museum. I have been there also. And if you know Latifa Safir, the great Latifa Safir, she lives in Los Angeles and we photographed her for her story in Quilt Folk in issue 11, Southern California. And we photographed her outside LACMA. It was great. It was a great, it was a great uh, location. So what is going on here with this quilt? This quilt belongs in the LACMA collection and it is called Bucket of Blood. Was I surprised when I read? Oh yeah. So I'm going to pull up. So this is how the, you know, every, every show begins with the, with a quilt, uh, uh, on my desktop. I share my desktop and it always has a different quilt on it. So I'm going to this because now we can zoom in. And this is a very, very high resolution photograph. They can't always be that way, all of them. But today we have one. So, so this, so we can zoom in, but you can see already if you're a quilt nerd, you, you're like, well, that's a signature quilt. You know, there's, there's names in here. Well, maybe you didn't see that they were names yet, but they are names in these blocks. Signature quilt, Bucket of Blood. This is from Los Angeles County Museum of Arts um, listing for this quilt. Roslyn Section, Roslyn Section, American Red Cross. So Roslyn Section, I believe, let me just, I believe, you know, I mean, Roslyn Section. I don't think that's somebody's name. I think it's like Roslyn yeah, okay, Roslyn section, it is, because <laughs> here, because here's how I know. Um, it was made in Pennsylvania, in Roslyn, Pennsylvania, in 1917. And it is appliqued, and uh, it is cotton, and it has signatures. It is 66 and a half inches by 51 and a half inches. Um, 168.9, uh, by 300, uh, sorry, by 131 centimeters. And it's not currently on public view, but yeah, it's, it's really called Bucket of Blood. That's not like, you know, that's, that's what it's called. Now there's nothing else about this quilt on the LACMA website. However, um, I mean, so, so signature quilts, if, if you don't know, is, uh, <laughs> signature quilts is made for, um, signature quilts are often made for, have been made for in the past, uh, charity, um, uh, charitable causes. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, you would, you would pay to, to put your name on a block, you know, you would get to have your name on in the quilt by paying, you know, a dollar or, you know, five dollars or. 50 cents or whatever it was. Um, and then that's, you would raise money by being a part of the quilt. You could donate some money and, and, and there you go. And so signature signature quilts were very popular in the 19, 19th century and early 20th century. I mean, they've always, they've, they've, they're popular. They're um, evergreen for quilt people, but, oh, hey, I didn't change the thing. I haven't changed the thing. I'm so sorry. I gotta go to this thing. Yeah. You didn't get to see this part, did you? Did you? Sorry. 
Sorry. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Molly, Bucket of Blood could definitely be a Norwegian death metal band. 1000%. 1000%. Um, sorry about not changing that screen, y'all. Um, yeah, okay, so signatures. And so so you could, you know, donate your your signature. And, uh, and then also, too, sometimes these quilts would, would be raffled off, you know, so you could make money. You double dip, I guess. If you did that, you would be. I don't know how common that was, but I'm sure somebody thought of it. Um, and so, you know, yeah. Oh, so I got I gotta Google bucket of blood quilt. I mean, I didn't do that because here's the thing. So, so, well, I already told you, I learn along with you. I get things prepared, but you know, I didn't have time to Google bucket of blood quilt. So I do it with you. Hmm. No, the only thing that's being referenced here is this LACMA, 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 LACMA picture. Um, so interesting. I would love to know more, but I mean, it, you know, yeah, I would love to know more. The, the Red Cross thing makes total sense now. Um, but uh, other than that, you nerded ahead. Oh, excellent. And found the symbol on Google Lens. You found the symbol, Google Lens? Oh, Lens, like with your phone, right? Is that what you do? Oh, I have my phone. <gasps> I love Google Lens. I've only ever do uh, done it with um, like buildings. Oh, wow. Well, this has never happened on Quilt Nerd before because usually our internet would not. Oh, okay, there, good. Ooh, yeah, good, okay. Holmes has a shortcut. Hey, Bip, hi. Um, yeah, the internet used to be really bad. And so I would turn off all devices before I went live, but now it's okay. Um, yeah, I know it's a spooky quilt. Okay. What did Holmes find? Let's, 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 let's do this. Ooh. Oh, she's good. Oh, she's very, very good. Oh, she's very good. We're going to go out of the full screen because we have something to look at. Look at this. You, you, you do get, you do get a, bag of crisps. You do get a bucket of crisps. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. This is, this is what I want to do. I want to, okay. Gonna bring this down. We had, we had full, um, appreciation of, uh, Holmes is find. Okay. But I'm just going to see if there's some other images of this bucket to show you as I read this thing, because you know, it's less fun to look at a Wikipedia entry than it is. Oh, well, hmm, to look at that. Um, well, oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Are you catching on to why this show might be called Quilt Nerd? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Y you do. You get it, right? You get it. Okay. Um, see, now we're learning. See, look at that. Oh, a quilt. Mm, yes. Well, boring. Who cares? Right? Mm, yes. Mm. But now we're talking about or <laughs> No, we're talking about, about the Airborne Division, the 28th Airborne Division in the United States Infantry. Okay. The 28th Infantry, the 28th Infantry Division, Keystone, is a unit of the Army National Guard and is the oldest division size unit. I won't read all of this, but we'll read some. In the Department of Defense. Okay, fascinating. Oh, you people, you people. Where have you been all my life? Stephanie Cake says, isn't Pennsylvania known as the Keystone State? <sighs> Probably, <laughs> but someone check. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that would be awesome. Wait a minute, roll on. I do feel like that does seem like a, you know, 200 commercial, but I don't want to say that because that's not very respectful. Um, Hang on. Okay. Okay. I got to read, but, but this one, this one, I wanted to see this. Interesting. Okay. Um, I want to look this symbol. Okay. The, that's this, the, the, the bucket, the symbol is the combat service identification badge. Interesting. Interesting. So let's see what it has about division commanders, mm -hmm. heraldic items, distinctive unit insignia. Oh, wait a minute. 
The shield. Hmm? What's going on? Okay, oh, oh, the, in, the 28th Infantry Division song was Roll On. We're the 28th men, and we're out to fight again for the good old USA. We're the, we're the guys who know where to strike the blow, and you'll know just why after we say, Roll on, 28th, roll on. Set the pace. Hold the banners high and raise the cry. We're off to victory. Let the keystone shine right down to the line for all the world to see. When we meet the foe, we'll let them know we're iron infantry. So roll on, 28th, roll on. Um, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In the opening scenes of the 1978 film Dawn of the Dead, soldiers are seen wearing red keystones on their uniforms. Interesting. Appropriate for Halloween, or, you know. And um, Band of Brothers. The 28th Infantry is uh, Division is mentioned in the miniseries Band of Brothers in Episode 5, Crossroads, at approximately 43 minutes into the movie theater, in the movie theater scene. All right, so state symbols. Okay, good. Okay, good. Oh, Band of Brothers. I finally watched it all last year. Oh, so good. Shoulder sleeve insignia, a red keystone. Okay, this is, this is, this is it. The keystone, symbol of the state of Pennsylvania, alludes to the nickname of the division. The shoulder sleeve insignia was approved in, in 1918. So, yeah, Stephanie's just, hey, the, it's Kevin. Kevin, right? In Philly? Oh, and he's from he's Pennsylvania. We got a we got a Pennsylvanian in the house. Central location. Okay, so so Kevin says geographically Pennsylvania's central location along the arch of the arc of the thirteenth original states calls to mind a keystone. Interesting. Sure, politically Pennsylvania played a vital role in holding together the states of the newly formed union. Mm. Thank you, Kevin. It's good to see you. Um, that reminds me of something. Today, I was researching Maryland. Yes, Maryland. Because, let's look at Bucket of Blood. Kevin, did you catch that this quilt, this quilt is called Bucket of Blood. It was made in 1917. The Red Cross made it. And it was made in Roslyn, Pennsylvania. Bucket of Blood. Keystone. I love it. I love this show. I love it. I would watch it. If I didn't make it, I would watch it. Um... I was researching Maryland for the next issue of Quilt Folk magazine because the next issue is about Maryland. And I learned that Maryland was a slave owning, you know, state. They, slavery was used and whatever there, but they remained in the union. They fought on the union side of the civil war. I mean, I don't know anything more than that. Just that like, Wow, I really? That doesn't make sense to me, but it's very unusual. And their flag, I don't think we have people from Maryland. Their flag reflects this, this sort of, this mix here. And it has to do with the people who, the Calverts or something who colonized it, whatever. But it, um, you know, it's, yeah, why does Maryland have a weird flag? Okay, the design comes from the coat of arms of George Calvert, Lord of Lord Baltimore, but it, it it alternated his father's black and gold stripe pattern with the red and white checkered cross pattern from the coat of arms of his mother. But like now, I guess, like these days or for a long time, it's sort of been like seen as the mix of like Confederate and Union. Yeah? Yay! Okay, Stephanie Cake. You're hiding from work. We won't tell. I know, isn't that interesting? So, and you're in Maryland, Stephanie. There you go. It's just, I mean, it's just really interesting. And, and, and so, and I was like, well, they, so, but the Confederate part, right? Like, eh, maybe we could, you know, they lost. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go there. But um, apparently, you know, long ago, it was sort of, it changed its its meaning or, or that its meaning became that it was this, you know, um, evidence or um, s- symbolism of how the country stayed together, you know, that it was like the bonds could not be broken. Like we made it, you know, um, which I can totally get behind. I think that's rad. So that's Maryland's flag, you know, and it's very unusual. There's really no other flag that looks like that. I mean, do we have any other checkerboard flags? in the United States flag collection. <laughs> um, U.S. flags. Someone's like, where are the rest of the quilts? Yeah, we'll get to the quilt. U.S. flags with checkerboards. That's it. That's all we're going to do. 
What do we have? Nope. Racing flags. Nothing. Looks like Maryland takes it, but I don't know. I don't know. We're going to fact check all that. Okay. Okay. So you may have, well, someone may actually have answered that question in the chat, but I just covered it up. Okay. Um, here. This book. Uh, as I, I showed you all yesterday or the other day. Yeah. Last stream that I got my book in the mail for the Fabric of a Nation American Quilt Stories exhibit at the Boston Museum of Fine Art that just recently opened like two weeks ago, a week ago. And um, of course I ordered the book ahead of time. I had to read ahead. Um, if you're in this digital room, you, you gotta get the book. You do. I mean, you do. And the reason that you do is because it's wonderful. And ugh, it's wonderful. This morning, I sat down uh, on that very couch, on that settee, and, um, and went to town on it. <laughs> and I didn't read everything because it's a book from a museum exhibit. I'm gonna look at the pictures first, you know? You're probably a similar type of person. Hey, you remember this? Weeks ago, when we did a sneak preview, uh, remember this woman, this wonderful sculptor? Oh God, sorry, it's really hard for me to figure out that part of this. Um, Virginia Jacobs, remember? Oh, I can't wait, okay. And I was thinking like, look at that close up. Um, it's just gorgeous. It's just like, I don't know. Um, I was thinking like, well, do I want to peek? <laughs> but I mean, I was seriously like, do I want to read ahead? I mean, do I want to just like, in, like be like, you know, bowled over by the exhibit, you know, just like seeing it for the first time? No, 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 no. What happens, and this has happened to me many times, many times, I could, I could list the quilts that that um I, I can list the quotes I saw that felt like celebrities to me and I like I, I cried I literally was like oh my god <laughs> um I remember them all I mean quotes that you see in, in a book or see on you know the quilt nerd show um and then you see the when you see the real when you see it in real life it's like any work of art you know like I read about the Pietà right in high school art class and then I was in Rome you know eventually and saw it and it was like <gasps> you might as well have seen a ghost or a celebrity. So, so it's definitely, hey, Alistrina. Yes. Oh, yes. Radka Donald's book wasn't easy to find now that it's out of print. That is good to know. That is good to know. If you see it, get it. Hey, Faith. I'm so glad that you're here, Faith. This is excellent. Um, Myra's here. Myra ordered hers yesterday. The MFA, ooh, MFA Boston was sold out, but Amazon has them. I mean, it wasn't cheap, and I had to get mine shipped here. I mean, I think it was like 35 pounds or something. I was like, that's like, I think it's like $50. But, I mean, like, I'm not going to get it. Anyway, my point is, is that I flipped through the whole thing and skimmed a little bit here and there. But when I got to, and it's just awesome. Oh, we're going to have, I mean, this is like a year's worth. Actually, it's like a month's worth of content on Quilt Nerd because <laughs> we cover a lot. But, no, there's just, I mean, it's just wonderful. So, Oh yeah, there's so much to talk about. Oh, God. So then I got to this particular quilt and I was like, oh, right. I've seen that quilt before. That is so weird. <laughs> that quilt is so weird. And indeed it is weird and it's wonderful. And I am gonna show you which one I'm talking about just a minute. It is a quilt called, well, it's, it's known as the Easter quilt, okay? And it's made, hmm, hang on, hide sidebar. It's all happening. It's this quilt, okay? And <clears throat> hang on, let me get it, okay. So this quilt was made by a woman, Bertha, it is my fault. You couldn't find a copy? Well, hmm, hmm, 
Hmm. That's, hmm. Okay, I, I'm thinking. Like, I'm thinking about, like, alternatives. Ah, there, there will be more. There will be more. It's going to be, it's a blockbuster exhibit, I have no doubt. Quilt exhibits always are. They always are. They always are. People always go to see quilt exhibits in art museums because quilts are accessible feeling, you know? You, you, everybody knows what a quilt is, right? So there's this like, oh, there's an exhibit at the museum. Oh, what is it? It's Matisse. Like, okay, you know? <laughs> or like, oh, there's this really cool exhibit, I guess, at the art museum in town. Like, oh, what is it? It's, a, it's quilts. It's like these awesome, okay, let's go. Yeah, let's go. That sounds great. That's what happens. That's what happens, okay? Families, couples across, around the world, you know? It's like when a fancy art museum shows quilts, it's a blockbuster. So it'll be a blockbuster and they'll make more. Okay. So this quilt I've seen before, but not for a long time. And it is in the show. And the idea that I would be ruining something somehow by looking at this quilt and reading about this quilt and then telling you all about this quilt is ridiculous because when I see this thing in person, it's going to be an intense experience. <laughs> So I am going to read, oh, the Radka Donald book. Okay, good. I was like, God, they really ran out fast. Of this book, this book is still available, but you should get it and do not delay. And also it is still true about quilt exhibits being superstar exhibits. Okay. So what's going to happen? See, now I'm like, I'm going to read, I'm going to read you about this quilt from this book. Okay. Because obviously it's going to be the best content out there at this time, or it is, it is the best content out there at this time about the woman who made this quilt and about this quilt. Um, so I'm going to read it to you as I show you more quilts made by this woman, Bertha Amelia Mextroff. Okay. Sherry McConnell had the curator on her podcast. Oh, awesome. What is her name? Um, not Wooly. Tooley? We'll have her on the quilt, quilt nerd. And we'll actually get to look at things. How about that? Can't, can't get that on a podcast. But I got to hurry up and get these interviews going. Okay, anyway, enough of that. <coughs> this. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Okay, okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Let me do one quick thing. Let me do one quick thing to cue up this thing. It's all happening. It's just, I just got to get, I got to get things. Try to get things ready. Everything was ready and and perfect. And then I decided I want to start with a different quilt. So then now we have to do that. Okay. All right. Now we're ready. Um, so this uh, this quilt is called Easter, like I mentioned, or the Easter quilt. It was made in 1933. And the woman who made this was born in 1872 and she died in 1960. She lived a, lo a long life. Um, can anyone, does anyone notice what is around? Hey, Nefflinster. Nefflinster, first time chat. I don't know if you've seen the show before, but this is your first time in the chat and I'm really glad you're here. And I hope you enjoy this show because yeah, because here we go. Fabric of a nation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, I'm so glad you're here. Everyone is very cool here. Does anyone notice what's around the, the cross? You know, any any guesses? Yes, the border the border does look like bats. Hmm. Why would it have also been appropriate for a, for a Halloween month? Do you think? If they were bats, then that would be very appropriate, wouldn't it? Oh wow. Okay, I didn't notice the spider webs. I did not notice them in the book, probably because it was very early in the morning and I was drinking tea. Yeah, those are spider webs. They are bats. They are bats. And that's the that's a spider web quilt pattern, which I have never seen in my life before. Here we go. From Fabric of a Nation. And uh, as I go, once we talk about the Easter quilt, uh, yeah, which is this, I'll begin flipping through other quilts of hers that we have images of. And I will tell you many of them come from the International Quilt Museum. And you will talk about that in just a minute. In 2017, the MFA, Museum of Fine Arts Boston, acquired a striking quilt by Bertha Amelia Mextroff. Mextroff. 
quote, one of the most original but least known quilters of uh, quilt designers of the 20th century. Mextroth created more than 130 quilts in her lifetime, guided by modern conceptions of individual artistic creation. Although Mextroth did not come to quilting early, she adopted it as a medium to effectively express her imaginative vision. Mextroth, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through because they come to the Easter quilt in just a minute. So are you ready to see more? We're gonna come back to this one. Mextroth was born in 1875 in Lesseur, Minnesota, to German immigrant parents. When she was quite young, her mother died and a housekeeper was brought in to help run the household. Becoming a beloved member of the family, this housekeeper was also a prolific quilter. Um, <laughs> though there is no indication that Mextroth learned to quilt in her youth. Far more influential on her career was a visit to the 1893 World's Columbian Exhibition in Chicago with her father. Um, there she was able to meet Bessie Potter, a notable sculptor. Mextrath's dream was to be a sculptor, though this seemed an unlikely prospect given her stature. Already petite, Mextrath probably suffered from a bout of undiagnosed polio as a child, resulting in a limp. Mextroth's activities between 1893 and 1902 are not known. However, her, her older sister, Anna, <laughs> married Richard Sears of Sears Roebuck Company, Sears and Roebuck Company, in 1895. Well done. <laughs> and appears to have supported her, so Anna Sears appears to have supported her younger sister for several years. Yeah, I think it is silk. I mean, they're just all ridiculous as you will see um but the story okay just buckle up um in 1902 bertha be began nursing studies at radcliffe college uh in cambridge massachusetts at the time bertha was 27 years old and significantly older than the other students while at radcliffe she indulged in her passion for sculpture enrolling in sculpture courses in addition addition to her nursing classes Unfortunately, Mextroth could not lift the heavy stones and was further challenged by the weight of the chisels. Her ambitions for a career in sculpture were thus thwarted. After her graduation from Radcliffe in 1906, Mextroth lived with her sister and brother-in-law in Glencoe, Illinois, in a Spanish-style home they called Casa Tranquilla. Yeah. There, with the support of Anna and Richard, Bertha set up an art studio. Unable to pursue traditional sculpture, Mextroth turned to quilt making, pursuing, quote, sculpting in cloth, unquote. Quilts with names such as Wedgwood and Cameo suggest Me Me Mextroth's interest in transforming cloth into other forms. She worked in the trapunto, reverse applique, and embroidery techniques because they produced vis visible sculptural effects. <sighs> Moreover, Mextroth opposed the use of traditional patterns typical of the time and instead made her own original designs. Hang on. Um, her quilts almost always had religious themes and frequently combined text, psalms, or, or Bible passages with images. Okay. This Easter quilt features one of Mextroth's unusual religious motifs. Set in the center of the white cotton field is a bold yellow cross formed with pieced and applique blocks. The design is extended in the border with a ring of gray bats in flight, appliqued around the scalloped edge. Mextroth had a unique conception of bats as Christian symbols, believing them to collect around Advent, grow in numbers, then, dis then disperse at Easter. Therefore, the MFA's quilt, untitled by Mextroth, might be appropriately called the Easter quilt. During the 1920s, Mextroth produced almost 100 quilts. Look at these things. Um, <laughs> in 1933, she was invited to display her quilts at the World's Fair in Chicago. 
She, uh, a local newspaper heralded the event, noting that Mextroth would be showing 94 of her painting-like quilts at the Illinois building and that, quote, Miss Mextroth will be there with them to give a lecture on the making of such works of art, demonstrating by her exhibit that such craft is indeed one of the fine arts, unquote. According to contemporary accounts, Mextroth's quilts were widely admired, and she subsequently became a frequent speaker at local ladies' clubs, church groups, and social events. In 1934, I don't, I, we have to look at this one again because I haven't been looking at it, and I, I, I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, in 1934, a local paper noted that Miss Mextroth is an authority on this medium of expression, unquote. And the last, last bit here says, Mextroth never sold any of her quilts during her lifetime and held on to them for a book that ultimately re remained unwritten. Oh, there's just a little bit more, sorry. And this is the really this is the good part. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> held on to them for a book that ultimately remained unwritten. Anybody, anybody want to pick that up? That project? Great, cool. I'd love to. Um, she never flagged in viewing her work as fine art and cloth. Um, according to her friend Margaret McGregor McGee, Max Stroth wanted her artwork to go to a museum, but knew that, quote, no museum would hang her sculptures except in handcraft sections where they would be classified quilts. This was unthinkable to her. Okay. Um, and this, I, ha I mean, I, I, I forgot to go on a little bit longer, not much longer, but you have to hear this part, okay? And there's more quilts to see. I mean, this is, this is, the, there's a tragedy waiting for us. The eventual dissolution of her collection after her death reveals attitudes, oh, sorry, reveals attitudes not untypical. Look at this, look at this. I have so many more for you, just, yeah. Reflects attitudes not um, untypical of the period toward both quilt making and women artists. Before her death in 1960, Mextroth had written a will. A will. She had written a will stipulating that her quilts were to be kept together and put on view as a memorial supported by $70,000 specifically set aside for the project. At Mextroth's death, the executor of her estate, Continental Bank and Trust Company, opted to contest the will. The Associated Press reported, quote, a spinster with an artist's pride and money to back it up has willed that her needlework be enshrined as a memorial. But though the executors concede that Miss Mextroth was a seamstress of no mean skill, they are not sure that the estate shouldn't be divided among 13 relatives, unquote. After two years of litigation, the probate court allowed the will to be broken, claiming with no apparent evidence that Mextroth had wanted to help educate young ladies. The court ordered the quilt collection. Oh I swear I could cry now. I could really do. I could really do it. The court ordered the quilt collection to be split between a local women's college, Barrett College, which with Mextroth had no affiliation, and Radcliffe College, her alma mater. Each college got $5,000 and half of the quilts. Are you kidding me? Each college got 5,000. Oh yeah, okay. Mextroth's relatives, re Mextroth's relatives received the remaining $60,000. Both institutions later sold off the quilts to fund scholarships. In conclusion, Bertha Mextroth's conception, this is called Wedgwood, by the way, obviously. Well, well, there's more about this in just a second. Bertha Mextroth's conception of herself as an artist and her desire to keep her collection, her will, her literal dying wish, sorry, my addition, to keep her desire to keep her collection together as a cogent body of, quote, sculpture in cloth, unquote, was thwarted by prevailing attitudes that refused to view her as anything other than a spinster and a seamstress. To the court and executors, she was not justified in using her funds as she saw fit. Likewise, Radcliffe College, transforming in the 1960s with the growing women's movement, 
may have complicated reactions, may have had complicated reactions to a gift of quilts that could have been perceived as outmoded women's work. Yeah, there's more. Sorry, there's more. A lot more. Um, so how that's 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 Bertha, Amelia, Maxworth, and that Easter quilt is in the museum in Boston right now. I mean, it's in their collection. That one actually. I guess they're all they're all in their collection, aren't they? All these quilts. But. I mean, I, when I read that this morning, I just, I mean, I was, I was interested in the Easter quilt. I was like, oh yeah, the bat, yeah, the bats, right? And then I read about it and was like, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. A hundred, what did they say? 130 quilts? Did they say 190 quilts? I don't think they said 190. Definitely 130. hundred and thirty. And, and I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, exactly, Molly. The value of women's work should be so much higher. I mean, it's just, it's so, it's so, it's, it's just, it's revolting. I mean, she, and they said like, oh, she was a seamstress who had no mean skill. Are you, I mean, who are you? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? I don't know her. You know, it's like, it's just, it's, it's a crime. It really is. It is actually, I mean, I would be, I would stand firm to say like a crime has been committed here, you know, cause that's, it was against her will. And, and these were so wonderful and, and, and unusual and beautiful. And I don't know. I mean, I guess the, it's not a good thing at all, but, but what is true, what might help us like not be so ragey. I guess it's been a day of feeling angry at things. Um, they're out there, you know, there's a lot of them out there, right? And um, hopefully <laughs> they're still out there and hopefully more will, will, will come forward. More will be discovered. Um, this, by the way, cause I just got to get out that old saw or get on my old saw. <laughs> I don't know. This is the kind of thing that makes me real nervous when people start cutting up quilts for clothes. And I don't think somebody would do that to this kind of thing. But I don't know, make a pretty awesome coat. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, makes me pretty nervous that a, a Mextroth might come up in an auction at some point and bye you know so uh yeah let me see I, I need to catch up on the chat yes art nouveau totally it's it's a wonderful i know we can appreciate her work now stephanie for the win exactly exactly we have to hey crosley at home hi oh boy this is great um hey marianne hi um, yes. Let, oh, this is good. Okay. I got to go back. I can't, I, I, sometimes I'm like, okay, well the chat's moved on. So I got to move on, but I can't, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Um, having just seen Midnight Mass, the quote reminds me of the series. Interesting. I don't know that show. Word and bird nerd. Um, but I believe you. Alistrina B. What are the patterns on that one? Yeah, we're going to go back. I want to look at it. Well, let's look at them all again. Um, the pink one, I can't quite figure out and we can all figure it out together. Holmes is screaming, same. Um, yeah, it's just uncool. It's just beyond. Um, choose your ex, ex executor wisely. Yeah, I mean, I wonder who, oh, it was the bank. It was the bank that she, oh God. I mean, this sounds maybe a little bit crass, but thank God she was dead. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like she did not see that happen, you know, which is the, I mean, 
and yet women persisted indeed. Oh, wait. People Refuse Falso says, or Hannah says, people refuse to believe that quilts are fine art because it's a woman-dominated art. I mean, it's just a fact that that happens a lot. It's not an opinion. It's not an opinion that quilts are historically and still totally, you know, just always playing second fiddle to to men who make art that's not as good as that. It's, it's, it's just, it's a fact. It doesn't happen all the time. It's changing. It's been changing. I don't think, I hope, that if this person had been making this art now, her will would not have been dissolved, fully dissolved, and her, her work and her money carved up just willy-nilly. I think, I think maybe the chances are better that that would not happen, but it's just really true. And it's a drag. Um, yeah, women did persist and it fit homes exactly. It fits with a Halloween theme because this is a horror story. Totally agreed. Yeah, the value of women's work, I'm telling you. When did, a work, when did the work of a bachelor ever get disregarded or belittled because he hadn't married. Yeah, totally a spinster. And also like, so what if she was a spinster or a single, <laughs> all the single ladies, all the single spinsters. Um, it's, it's, yeah. And it's just like, and she, she was a seamstress and a spinster. Yeah. Anyway. So yes, we are all outraged. We're all mad on the internet and, um, a link to these. Yes. So here's what I need to new Elizabeth. Hi, listen, we're, we're, we're here, been here. We will continue to be. We're really glad you're here. Um, there's a similar story. Kevin says here in Philadelphia with the Barnes museum, Albert Barnes left specific instructions in his will about the art he collected. All was basically thrown out the window. There was a documentary art of the steel. Oh, that, that's on Netflix, right? That's on Netflix, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, totally, totally, totally. Work is calling. Okay, Bip, see you on the replay. Thanks for dropping in. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I want to go back to this, uh, this one. God, it's so great. Oh my God, oh my God. Um, I've got a couple other images that, as you probably saw, the Wedgwood thing is ridiculous. I have a little bit of information about that. And the images are, oh, this one, the pink one, right? Did I go right past it? No. What? What's happening? Hmm. Yes. Yes. Very strange. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, I love this one, too. I wonder what the Latin means. Pool. pool Pulcha. Interesting, because in Spanish, quilt is culcha, but pulcha et industria. Anybody speak Latin? Or can look it up real quick. Pul. Pul. Hmm. Pulch, pul, uh, pulchar. Pulchar et industria. Something et industria of work, whatever, right? So, okay. Yeah, time period. The Easter quilt was made in. I'm gonna pull this one up now because we, we wanted to look at it. Um, I'll zoom in real close. Maybe somebody can. Hmm. The Easter quilt was made in 1940, 1933. Yeah, 1933 was the Easter quilt with the bats. Um, and she lived, by the way, from 1872 to 1960. It was 1960 when they pulled that. Cool. Um, and then it was interesting too, you know, that the book said that, you know, Radcliffe got half of half of these quilts and, you know, the women's movement, you know, was kind of kicking up into gear, into the gear that it kicked <laughs> at that time. And quilts might not have been something that they were like, really super excited to have. I don't know. That's, that's the inference that they made here in the book. It's not my inference or, or my, you know, it's not my thought, but it's their thought. So what do you think about this? What is this? What is this thing? And, and I'm going to tell you that the, um, many of the pictures that you're seeing come from the International Quilt Museum. And I'm going to show you 
the link that I'm going to give you for these images is the link to their collections page. I'll do it right now. And I just got to tell you, if you haven't ever given any money to the International Quilt Museum, I would love it if you would, you know, give a little, it's better than nothing, give a lot, because I know you're all fabulously wealthy people, <laughs> just sit around, you know, eating bonbons and like donating to good causes, but like, it's, uh, it's a really important place for us, obviously, right? To nerd without the International Quilt Museum would be not to nerd at all, you know? So, um, yeah, head over, donate, donate a little cash, man, because we certainly enjoy their images here, don't we? And it's the least we can do. So, um, sorry, okay, sorry. Okay, so I'm getting her name. Um, yeah, anybody got ideas? Pink, okay, pink. Crescent moons, yes, I do think these are crescent moons. Footprints. Oh, this pink one, Marianne says, could be the smooshed trapunto and look like footprints. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, they do look like footprints. They do. I'd say that's the best, best guess. I mean, anybody else have thoughts? Huh. Why? Right, clear up. I mean, thank God the quilt museum has some of these quilts. You will find many of the quilts you saw are there. It has that bat thing going on also. Oh, it does because you know, they look like crescent moons, but they also look not like crescent moons, you know? They look like little croissants to me. Hmm, not like croissants. But yeah, they, I don't know if it's maybe smushed like, like Marianne was saying, or if it's or if it's got a different shape to it, I don't know, but it's so cool. It looks like it's like been satin stitched, you know? I don't think, I don't think so. So that is Bertha. Oh no, it's not all, that's not all. You may have noticed I had some other images in there. First of all, one is out of place, but that's fine. This is um, a, a, a newspaper clipping that says um, that she's coming to speak. Where did I find this? I usually keep track of that. Hmm. Oh, I think I, so yeah, okay, I, I remember. There isn't a, um, yeah, there isn't um, any of her work in the Smithsonian that I could find, but I did find that they have some papers of hers and I think this was, I think this was in there. Anyway, so what it says is, um, in the afternoon, Miss Bertha, so it's the ladies aide of the Presbyterian Church of Northbrook, I assume in Pennsylvania. Um, oh, no, 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 Northbrook, Northbrook, Chicago. I mean, that I was like, I mean, it's Northbrook in, in Illinois. That's like a suburb of Chicago. Right, because she was living in Glencoe, not in Pennsylvania. Um, as a special feature, okay, da 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 da, uh, announces Miss Bertha Mextroth, a well known artist of Glencoe, will exhibit pieces from her large collection of sculpture and painting in cotton, linen, and silk. Miss Mextroth has, the, has exhibited her quilts and decorative pieces at the Century of Progress and many neighboring clubs where they have been received with acclaim. Miss, Miss Mextroth is an authority on this medium of expression. So she did get, and it said in the thing, she got recognized. She was recognized for being amazing. She found respect and admiration in her life as, as, um, a quilt maker and an artist as an artist and that's how she wanted herself to be referred to right so then i went down the rabbit hole remember when i told you this was a very good example uh this show tonight would be a very good example of um how this works <laughs> how this all works i'm gonna go to um this website that we've just enjoyed looking at oh whoops i gotta go out of Full screen mode on that. Um, I'm going to go to the International Quilt Museum's 
site, okay? And this is the link that I just gave you to all these wonderful quilts, okay? And I'm not sure which one it was, but, okay, it's not that one. There was, there was a, oh, I know how to find it. This is such a great site to search on. The collection, it was um, Elizabeth Morrow was a, um, what is that? What's going on here? Um, hmm, strange. Was a collect, one of the quilts came from an Elizabeth Morrow collection, okay? I don't know which one it was, so we're gonna have to look through. And I, I became instantly obsessed with thinking through, you know, where could these be? Where could the rest of these quilts, be? yes, 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 here. Where could these quilts be? We have to find them, uh, like, people haven't thought of that already, but I mean, I'm thinking about like Radcliffe, like, can we please go to Radcliffe and start, or just start calling people and emailing people and just getting to the bottom of this and finding more of these quilts. And I don't know how many of them have been located and what museums they're in, you know, but I'm sure the Museum of Fine Arts Boston, oh, I got to plug in this computer. Oh boy. Um, I'm sure that they have been on the case or somebody has been on the case. The quilt museum has been on the case. Um, but Elizabeth Morrow, I was like, who is Elizabeth Morrow? You know, do you see it says IQM collection, Elizabeth Morrow collection. So I assume she, this person, Elizabeth Morrow donated the quilt. Okay. So I Googled Elizabeth Morrow because I thought, oh, my, ba my battery's, my battery's going to die. Hang on one second. Hold on. Here we go. Got it, right? Good. Sorry. I haven't done that in a while. Okay. So, um, hmm. I didn't find anything about, well, I didn't find that I, an Elizabeth Morrow was, uh, <laughs> was collecting quilts. Uh, I didn't find an Elizabeth Morrow 
art collector or quilt collector easily. But I did find an Elizabeth Morrow, okay? I'm gonna show you what I found about Elizabeth Morrow and because it's really nice. <laughs> and, then I'll, and then we will go into the second half of the show um, because, and which is inspired by directly a result of what I found out about Elizabeth Morrow. Is she our Elizabeth Morrow? I don't know, but it could be. And yeah, the people at the Quilt Museum would know, uh, and I can ask them eventually. But look, look what I found. I found an Elizabeth Morrow. Morrow. Um, this is the first Elizabeth Morrow I found. And she had a quilt on her bed, which I happen to know she bought at like Anthropology, I think. She's just, she's a girl who has a blog or something. I, I don't know. It's not her. It's not her. But I was very confused because this was the first picture I found that c could possibly be, you know, it was like Elizabeth Morrow. Like, what, what's going on? Like, what? And it was from some fashion blog or some decor decorator blog. And it was like... Elizabeth Morrow invites us into her home. And I was like, oh, wait, this is sort of an artful, wait, wait what, Elizabeth Morrow is alive? Like, that's a, whoa. No, this is, she's casually studying it. It looks like she has a thermometer. Is that a thermometer? Why is that a thermometer? Well, she's looking very deshabille, deshabille, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so this this was not this is not our moral. Pregnancy it is it is pregnancy test. It is a pregnancy test. Is she reading? Like what is she doing? What is this picture? <laughs> Vape pen? I don't know. It's just totally weird. Adorable dog and great hair. I don't think she needed an interface for her photo, but I sound like a mom. Va it's either a vape pen, a and a thermometer, or a pregnancy test, or something else. Maybe she COVID test. I know it looked like a COVID test. Wild guess. I don't know. The corgi. I think it's a corgi. Can stay. Anyway, so the Elizabeth Morrow that I found. There's an there's a, a book author, and. The, this book author, Elizabeth Morrow, like the timing would work out if this person was collecting these quilts. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, this person, Elizabeth Morrow, seems like kind of an interesting person. And she's the bridge to the next thing. Um, Pine of Judgment, a Christmas story. Who knew? <laughs> Holmes. A pregnancy test for the corgi. Corgis need pregnancy tests too. We need to know. We need to know. Um, on Goodreads, A Pint of Judgment gets um, very high stars. Very, very, a lot of stars. Very high reviews. It's well reviewed, okay? And there are these, oh, there's these other, she's written other books. And it's just interesting because like, I know there's a lot of Elizabeth Morrows out there. I understand. But when I entered, I didn't just put Elizabeth Morrow. You know, I was Googling Elizabeth Morrow art collector, Elizabeth Morrow artist collection, you know, quilt collection. You know, it was, I was being more specific. And so these pretty awesome looking books came up and I'm like, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's that, you know, or maybe, I don't know, I don't know. But I just thought I'd show you these really cool books. Because it could be uh, that this person is, you know, <laughs> you need a gallon of judgment. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I did read that title, A Pint of Judgment, and I was like, A Pint of Judgment. And then I saw it was A Pint of Judgment, A Christmas Story. And it's like, is this a Bill W. kind of deal? Like, is this like a, a Pint of Judgment? I don't know. Someone should read it. Anyway, just really, really neat um, illustrations. So, so I'm like, okay, this was very interesting. I could not find another picture of this. This picture was cut off. Beast, bird, and fish. It does. It is written by an Elizabeth Morrow. I love the art that's going on there. And this is a picture from inside the book. And then that's all I've got. Okay, sorry. There's our little lamb for the slaughter. He's in big trouble. Ooh, Easter perhaps comes back into the theme. So then I, I'm poking around. Well, 
word in bird nerd. Perhaps, and, and that may very well be the case, because it would be in the Wikipedia entry for this woman, who is her daughter. And her daughter, if this, if I got it right, <laughs> is Anne Morrow Lindbergh. Lindbergh, as in Lindbergh, okay? So even if I'm completely wrong, which is very possible, even if I'm, I've just, you know, the rabbit hole is, is working its magic, it's dark, it's dark magic. However the case, however we got to the wife of Charles Lindbergh, uh, I thought about airplane quilts, obviously. Airplane quilts, because airplane quilts are like a whole thing. Uh, you might know that, you might not know that, but you're about to know it. Because airplane quilts became very popular around the time, or at the time, of Charles Lindbergh's flight. And so I pulled up a bunch of airplane quilts to look at. And I want to know more, you know, about this. Oh, and, and, before we look at these, and I'm going to read about them, I also found a free pattern from AQS for, to make this wonderful vintage airplane quilt, which I think is darling. And so I'm going to post it in, in the Discord. Discord's looking quite good, by the way. I love it. Okay. Um, so this is really cool from AQS. So it's a, it's a full pattern. I take no credit for it. It is from, um, it is by a woman. She has, she has a name. There's a person who, who made this and I want to read her name here. Um, it was designed by Betsy Langford. And um, it's 50 by 50 inches and it was for AQS, the free patterns for AQS. Okay, so I'll put that in the Discord, okay? Um, all right. Hey, nose to quilts, good, good, good. Oh yeah, we're still here. Um, I have to go by like 7.15, maybe. Yeah, no, I have to go, because I have to do a, a, a Zoom call at 7.30. Yeah, I know the work doesn't end. The work day doesn't end when you're in a different time zone like this. So let's take a look. I just pulled up some 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 airplane quilts because airplanes. Okay, so with Charles Lindbergh's nonstop solo flight from New York to Paris in 1927, the imagination of American quilters also took wing. Several pieced patterns depicting airplanes from this from the date from this time. And in 1953, with the publication of Lindbergh's book, The Spirit of St. Louis, airplane quilts became popular once more. It's cool, right? It's really cool. I think it's awesome. This uh, is a picture from an Oxmoor House book of patterns. Um, so I just, I found some, some things. Um, okay, so, hey, GPF mom. Welcome back. Welcome back. Anne Morrow Lindbergh, Morrow Lindbergh was an aviator too. Charles Lindbergh's wife. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Maybe were they pictured in planes together? Maybe I'm thinking of a picture or something I saw, but that's awesome to know that. That's great. Um, okay. So, so airplane quilts, this one is, and they, they do vary in, in their, their style as, as, uh, we were told, um, this one, Okay, yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of them here. Hang on, hang on. Okay, this one comes from Bill Volkening. And um, do you, I don't know if you all know Bill Volkening or his his um, his collection. He has a an extensive collection. Uh, this quilt was sold. He does a fair amount of selling uh, of his quilts. This was <laughs> this quilt was sold ten years ago in 2011. Um, it was made in 1940. You yeah, know, we should take a look at his website. We ha haven't in a long time. Maybe we can look together. But this was made in 1940, and I just think it's really it's nice. I mean, the, the airplane lends itself to the quilt block when it's when it's done like that, right? Mm-hmm. 
I find it so hard to make a quilt with just a few colors. I mean, I've never done it because I just, I just like scraps too much, you know? But they're so cool, especially red, white, and blue ones. I mean, you gotta admit, a really good red, white, and blue quilt that's just red, white, and blue is so good. Okay, here's another one. This one's an interesting size. I mean, you know, this one is such an interesting size that it almost makes you think it was, you know, made for the wall, right? Mmm. Hey, Crosley, I'm so glad you came by. Excellent, excellent. Good, good, good. I'm glad. And come, I'll be here on Thursday. So come by on Thursday and then Sunday, hopefully. No show on Saturday because I'll be in, in Hungary. I'll be in Budapest. It's exciting. Um, and Rosie the Riveter could quilt too. Rosie the Riveter? What do you mean? Really? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, Marianne. I'm not sure, but I'm sure it makes perfect sense. <laughs> um, so anyway, this is a close up of that quilt. And yeah, this one, this one's kind of a rectangular. I mean, it's kind of a rectangular. They, they look a little smushed. Not that we're here to judge quilts. That's not the point, but you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. So I think this one is in a museum, maybe in G Germany. I don't know. I've got it all written down, but the, this is the back. Okay. Actually, I'm going to show you the full back here and then we can zoom in. But this is so interesting. Look at that American ace flower. So it was a feed sack that featured, I mean, Charles Lindbergh, right? Right? I mean, that, is that Charles Lindbergh? It's gotta be, it's gotta be. I mean, it looks, it looks a, a kind of feminine. The face is a bit feminine, but it isn't, right? Hey, good, good. Thanks, little bird. Rosie the Riveter. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Oh, by helping to make an airplane. Rosie was making an airplane. I forgot that about Rosie the Riveter. Thank you. I totally forgot that was part of the thing. Um, president of the Philly Modern Quilt Guild, you are one step ahead of me. I have that pulled up. That is how we close out the airplane section of this show. Very good. You are a nerd. You are a quilt nerd for sure. Because that's a deep cut. Um, that's awesome. So, uh, yeah, so this is interesting. That's Charles Lindbergh, right? The back is even more, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> I see you. Um, let's see, let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Blitz, yeah, the Blitz, interesting. Okay, yeah, the back is really, really cool. So that's that one, very interesting. And then this guy, this one is at the Quilt Study Center Museum. Oh, wow, oh yeah, okay, wow, we have to look at that. Huh. Uh, Fiendor says, my grandson has a room decorated uh, around an antique red and white airplane quilt. Awesome. The pattern was in Ladies Home Journal. And oh, you should definitely post a picture of that in the Discord. 1000%. 1000%. And if you're new here, we have a Discord. The most awesome website, with awesome platform with such a weird name that I don't care for. But we have a quilt nerd discord and uh you can be invited to it um and i can invite you to it right now and that's where the conversation continues after the show is over uh the discord is basically just like a a, a really nice chat room with different channels uh in the show that where you can post the work that you that you make uh works in progress finish things um just as um fiendor was saying she has a picture that she'd like to share with us. She can't share it in the chat here, but she can share it on the Discord. So I am going to do this. I'm gonna invite, I'm gonna invite anyone in the chat right now to join the Discord. Uh, if you click on this link, you'll be taken to the Discord and you can join the conversation and it would be great. It'd be great to have you. Um, it's really nice, it's really fun. I was a little worried starting it up because I was like, I don't know, it's another platform. Are people gonna like it? And it's, people are really using it. You all are really using it and that's great. Um, this one comes from the Quilt Study Center circa 1940s, I believe. This one, the pictures are, are not good of this one, obviously, but I really wanted to show you this one because of the quilting on it. I think there's even a closer, yeah, yeah. 
I love it. Isn't that cool? I really like I really like how they did it um, with those little circles. And it, I don't know. It's interesting. Like this this looks hand this is hand quilted. I I think I don't know, but the the airplane the airplane almost looks like it's machine quilted. I mean I don't think I don't think it's um. Oh, ooh, ooh, you already posted. Oh, that's great. Um, I don't think it's embroidered, but I don't know. It just it just looks really tight. Like the stitching looks really tight and really precise. Um, not that you can't do that with hand quilting, but I think it's kind of I think it's kind of unusual looking, right? It just looks different. It looks different. I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Um, episode discussion. Oh, here we go. You see, this is why the Discord is so awesome, because we already have. Oh, this is awesome. This is so great. OK, we're going to look at this uh, look at this quilt that, that we've just had posted to the Discord. It's awesome. OK, hang on. Mm -hmm. Open original. OK, I can do this. Oh, yeah. <gasps> OK, what I'm going to do. Yeah, OK, we'll look at that one. So so I'll put it at the end of my um, my little slideshow here. OK. So this one, this I found by accident. I mean, not by accident. I was looking at the airplane quilts, right? After thinking about Charles Lindbergh randomly because of other quilts, other quilts took us to Charles Lindbergh. Charles Lindbergh flight made me think of airplane quilts, of course. And I found this one in my internet search and I thought, I've seen that quilt before. And I, <laughs> I have seen that quilt before long ago. I, this quilt came up somewhere and I loved it so much. And I was editor of Quilty Magazine at the time. And I, I, I found it, or I guess Fonz and Porter bought it. I was like, ah, and we, we did a pattern for it for Quilty Magazine. And it was on the cover. I gotta get out of the Discord or it's gonna be, cause people are joining left and right. Um, I, I, we put the quilt on the cover of Quilty Magazine. <laughs> Really, I forgot to. Um, I forgot to pull up a cover of that of that issue, but I will find it immediately, hopefully quickly. Um, yeah, I just thought it was here. It is here. It is. Well, this is the style shot of it anyway. Um, it's just crazy. This particular quilt, and that's the back. It's obviously very damaged. Um, this quilt got its star turn uh, many years later uh, on the cover of a magazine. That is, it's not the full cover, but I have the style shot. Anyway, some of you may have, <laughs> if you have Quilty Magazine <laughs> and you have your little stack of Quilty Magazine, you know, you have your little stack handy, you could take a picture and put it in the Discord. I've got a, 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 a ser you know, I've got the full set of Quilty Magazines, but uh, not with me here in London. I'm just kind of scrolling through a little bit more. They're not, they're hard to find. They really are hard to find. Um, you know, did you ever read Sassy Magazine? <laughs> did you know about Sassy Magazine? I feel like, and I've been told, Quilty Magazine was kind of the Sassy Magazine, you know, of the quilt world. Okay, there, here, here today, gone tomorrow, Sassy. Okay, so this little this little quilt blog, I just there's some really good uh, photos of it on the website where it was for sale long ago, and um, it. Uh, yeah, there were just yeah. So I wanted to show you these pictures at least, and I've got a, a good style shot of it. Um, nope, that is not so good, blown up like that. Well, that's all right, but you have to go away now. Okay, and then this one. I mean, I was pulling up anything that I liked, uh, anything that looked good. This is from a magazine, some magazine in the 1980s, a quilt magazine. It did not have an attribution because it was on Pinterest. <sighs> And so it was not, um, yeah, I couldn't identify it, but it's clearly like from a, mag a quilt magazine in the 1980s and it's findable, you know, we could find it. We could find it. Yeah. Uh, and then this one, I think this is, there's just like two more. This one is at the Quilt Museum website or at the Quilt Museum, uh, the collection there. Um, okay, Nefflinster, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're really glad you're here. And I speak, I speak for everybody. 
Uh, thanks for coming. So this one, this one is airplane or swallow, because they, they look like birds, you know? They look a little bit like birds. And I mean, they could be airplanes, it could be birds. It's listed under airplane or swallow quilt. Um, but it's 19, hang on. Mm -hmm. four, uh, hmm, four swallows? Yeah, four swallows. Um, yeah, okay, four swallows it's, it's listed under, um, but alternate pattern is listed at, as airplanes. And it's just great. It's really, really great. It's a kit quilt. Interesting. 1925. 1925. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And then this one is... Um, from, hang on, it's uh, a quilt made in the American South, and I think it's 1970. I need to check, obviously, I need to check, but um, I'm pretty sure it comes uh, to us uh, around 1970. And, um, <laughs> oh yeah, oh no, no, wait, hold on, hold on, not yet. I gotta show, um, I gotta show our newest one. Every, the tech was like perfect. I was feeling very good about my tech and I guess I still am, but I had to, uh, that discord threw me off, man. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's this before we go to that last, that last quilt, that Jonathan Shannon quilt that, um, Kevin mentioned this, this is our quilt from Fiendor. That's the quilt that Fiendor said. My grandson has a room decorated uh, around an antique red and white airplane quilt. The pattern was in Ladies Home Journal, she thinks. She'll try to post a picture in Discord. Success. You did it. You did it. That's really great. That's really great. You know, I have to say, I'm not just saying this, but looking at the different airplane blocks that we've seen, I like that one. I like that one. I like the little, these kind of like a kind of kicky, kicky little uh, tail, you know? this little guy. That's great. And it's, it's pieced, right? It's not app. Is it appliqued? I mean, the little circles are, and Hey, those circles, we saw those before, you know, Hey, we, we saw those before you remember that magazine. Oh yeah. Ladies home journal. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of something cool to show you. Okay. Um, these are, these are appliqued, but what do you think Fiendor? Do you know more about it? Or have you, have you examined it like in a close way? Oh, great. But yeah, it has those little circles, like the quilting on that other quilt, you know? Okay. Um, so then just as we promised. So Kevin, I'm curious about what, you know, I said, I was going to look this up. Hang on. I just want to make sure this is a 1970s quilt because if I say it is and it's real if, and I'm really wrong, it's uncool. Um, yeah, I'm cu yeah, I'm curious about um, what you know about um, Jonathan Shannon. Yeah, 1970, circa 1970 on this quilt, um, and it was made. Oh, and we know the name. Oh, thank God, I looked it up. Roberta Jemison. Roberta Jemison made in Greene County, Alabama. I'm putting the link in the chat. And I put all the show links now, all the materials in the Discord under the episode discussion channel. Um, I need to catch up on all the past episodes. <laughs> There's like 40 of them. Um, <clears throat> and I'll try my best. I'll do my best in all my downtime. But going forward, yeah, um, with every show, either the day of the show or in the day after, because if I leave it longer than that, oh, it's going to be, it's going to pile up and be really bad. So hopefully my goal is after every show, I make the thumbnail for the show, export it to YouTube and do the show notes basically in the discord. Okay. So everything will be there. You don't have to worry that you're going to lose these links, you know, forever once the show is over. Um, but this was in Green County, Alabama, circa 1970, 90 by 73 inches. It's identified as an African-American made quilt, hand pieced. Yeah, it's got airplanes. I love it. It's great. Okay. So, so Kevin, yeah, the, um, uh, um, Jonathan Shannon, 
I was thinking about airplane quilts, and of course I thought of one of the most famous quilts. Like, I don't know. It's it, this, this quilt was named one of the most, the best quilts or the most important quilts of the 20th century by Quilters Newsletter Magazine, and I think International Quilt Festival. Right. It was like a it was like a, a they teamed up, I believe, to identify the hundred most important best quilts of of all of the 20th century. And this is one of them. And Kevin says that you saw this. He saw this quilt air show. That's the name of this quilt at AQS Lancaster. But why you remember him, Kevin, is because one first male to win best of show in Paducah, right? At AQS, yeah. And two, because he would go on to create another quilt, yep, we'll look at it, that was censored due to its subject matter of AIDS. Indeed. Um, yes, so so this, we're gonna look at, at that, what is, uh, it's called Dia de los Muertos, right? I can see it in my mind and I'll pull it up right now. Um, but yeah, this quilt is amazing. This is amazing. He, is, he passed away, um, I keep wanting to say Michael Shannon, but that is the actor. Michael Shannon. Um, Jonathan Shannon passed away. Um, I mean, too young, right, Kevin? I don't know when we can find out. But um, yeah, I mean, one of the quilt scandals of our age, Amigos Muertos. Yeah, okay. Um, one of the quilt scandals, you know, of our age is that is that this particular quilt, Amigos Muertos, another quilt by Jonathan Shannon, was you know, banned from the AQS show um, because it, I mean, it depicted, yeah, because it will, yeah, let's hang on one second. Make us more toast. Uh, well, yeah, because it had to do, the subject matter had to do with, with AIDS. Okay. So um, he was, he was, yeah, that was the, the content of the quilt was related to that and I just found it. I found, I think, a yeah, really good image of it. Terrific. Okay. So airplane quilts, airplane quilts, y'all. Interesting. So yeah, that's how, that's how, um, uh, Bertha, uh, Mextroth ended up taking us to airplane quilts and then to Jonathan Shannon and to Baduka in the 1980s. We will read about it. Um, yeah, 1994, 1994 quilt police. I know, I know the quilt police, man. And I mean, it's, it's like, it just, it just, it does, it's a lesson, right? I mean, like Bertha Mextroth's quilts were not valued because she was a woman. I mean, they just, she wasn't taken seriously as an artist. Because, you know, she was a lady artist. She was a seamstress, you know? So people were like, what you make is not as valid as what this other person makes, okay? Which is illogical. It doesn't make sense. It makes no logical sense unless you have, unless you're working with a certain set of principles that upon further examination just don't make sense. So it happened to her and then it happened here, you know? So it's like, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good reminder, you know, that it's like no one, no one's work, you know, no one should be judged for who they are, you know, if they're making work that is beautiful, you know, or, or significant, you know, what year, so this was 1994, Vicky, and it is, it, let me, let me see if I can find some, um, some good some good content about this some good writing um hang on mm -hmm. don't think i'll find it there let me just get something that i can read to you i mean look at this quilt it's so amazing oh it's so amazing okay so this this quilt was featured in a century of quilts in a, a pbs did a documentary a, a brief it was, it was brief I, i'm pretty sure i'm gonna put the link in the Discord, I'll put the link in the Discord. Um, okay, great, so this is from PBS. All right. Um, they did a, a show called Quilts, 
century of quilts, moments in time. I'll put it. I'll put it in there. And this, they did it back in. When was that little show? Okay, it's been a while. It's been a while since they did this little special on quilts. I mean, it's not new. It's not the craft in America thing. It's different. Um, yeah. So Jonathan Shannon was the first male winner. Kevin, you're good. Uh, by the way, this quilt is 89 by 89. Jonathan Shannon was the first male winner of the American Quilter Society Best of Show Award in 1993 with his quilt, Air Show, which we just saw. Quote, I've always been very, very interested in textiles and my long and varied, and in my long and varied career, um, I've often had a lot to do with textiles in both fashion and interior designing. So when I was 50, this is still Mr. Shannon speaking, I suddenly had a lot of time, freedom. I have a degree in fine arts in painting uh, years and years ago, and I'd always thought I'd go back to painting. He started when he was 50, and you know, Bertha Mextroth also started later. So don't think you're too old to do anything. So in this, in the link I'll put in the Discord, you can read more about more about this. Um, Okay, hmm. this actually doesn't address the controversy. Okay, here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've got it. Have other quilts been banned? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, th so this is from a, a blog. Uh, this, is, this person is writing uh, Gwen McGee. Gwen McGee, this is from a blog from two, 2007 about this topic. The PBS thing was great and had some quotes from Jonathan because apparently he's featured in that, but he had the, the, the um, and they show this quilt but the uh, censorship thing was not addressed. So I switched over and I'll put the link in the Discord. So this is Gwen McGee many years ago saying, perhaps the most well-known instance of censorship in the quilt art world was triggered by this quilt created by Jonathan Shannon, who in 1993 became the first male to win the American Quilter Society Award for Airshow. Jonathan then went on to create Amigos Muertos a commemoration of the lives of artists who died from AIDS and cancer. Amigos Muertos was submitted to AQS in 1994. It was rejected because of its subject. This censorship caused uproar in the quilt community, yay, with many artists responding with disbelief and outrage. A full discussion of this incident is included in Flavin Glover's interview of Jonathan Shannon for the Alliance for American Quilts. Awesome, there's a link, you can listen to it, amazing. Wow, yeah, I need to look at the alliance. I haven't in a long time. Wow, that's really, duh. Despite the controversy in America, Amigos Muertos went on to win England's National Patchwork Championship. Hey, England. And has since been honored as being one of the 100 quilts of the century. Awesome. Holmesmaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Holmes says, I can't believe anyone saw that and their first thought was to censor it. Exactly. Like, why? I mean, it's it's just, and it was like, it was AIDS and cancer. Not that he should have had to put something else, you know, on it to, to, you know, it shouldn't have mattered. But I mean, it's not just AIDS <laughs> that I'm memorializing these people who have died. It's others. I mean, look at that. Oh, are you kidding me? Look at that floral fabric that's been used in the garden. It's just amazing. It's amazing. Oh, this applique and the skeleton. I mean, it's just a masterpiece. It's just a total masterpiece and a record of its time, right? 1000% a record of what was happening. You know, 1994 was after studying the AIDS quilt a fair amount, like 93, 94, very bad, very bad. So, I know it's way amazing. So, so it's seven o'clock and I think what I'm gonna do is, I gotta get all these things for me to put in the Discord. And I th think I'll just use a few minutes to show you, let's go to, let's go to Bill Volkening's blog. I've worked with Bill a couple times. Um, he wrote for Quilt Folk, remember Bucket of Blood, wow. If you didn't, if you weren't here in the beginning, this quilt on your screen is called, oh wait, do you have it on your screen? No, you don't yet. Yeah, you do. It's called uh, Bucket of Blood. It was for Halloween. It's kind of a Halloween kind of thing. Um, Bill wrote some articles for 
Hey, okay, Kevin, thanks for coming by. It was a really, really good suggestion. Really good. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, Bill worked for uh, Quilt Folk for an issue. Anyway, so so this is Bill Volkening's blog. I'll put it uh, in the Discord. And I when I went to go see, to find that um, airplane quilt credit, because I showed an airplane quilt from Bill, I noticed, uh, I clicked on his blog, and this is a big deal. Laura Fisher passed away. Do you know about about this, about about this person, Laura Fisher. This is this is a big deal. Laura Fisher is a quilt dealer, was a quilt dealer in New York City and I mean legendary. I am so I'm so sad to hear this because oh, I really would have liked to talk to her. Damn it. She I mean the quilts that she Came, listen, we'll talk about Laura. We'll talk about Laura next time. I'll do some research to, to get some some good stuff pulled up for you all. She was amazing, and I mean, I I'm this sucks because I really, really, really wanted to meet her and talk to her, and now I can't do it. Anyway, but it's it's really it's really she has an amazing life and and was just in the quilt world in the dealer collector quilt world. I mean, just one of the most important, one of the most well-known, big, 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 big name in New York City, dealing quilts for decades. So, okay, everybody, thank you so much. Um, I gotta eat some dinner. And I hope that you're well. Stuff in the Discord, watch YouTube, watch the replay. Uh, if you didn't catch all of the show, uh, I love bringing you this content and I, I really hope that you've enjoyed um, tonight's show. And um, yeah, no censorship, value women's art. <laughs> And um, yeah, if you're flying on a plane, wear a mask, wash your hands, don't touch your face, <laughs> and just, yeah, social distance. I have to do that this week. I'm a little nervous about it, but it'll be okay. Okay, everybody, have a great night. Happy Tuesday. And I will see you in uh, the day after tomorrow. Okay, take care. Bye.